uh, we're going to talk very quickly. Uh, and I actually have fewer slides than usual, so it's not just my normal talk quick over a lot of slides. Uh, but we're going to talk about elevated COVID-19 related mortality risk in people with CP. So we all are familiar with COVID, uh, unfortunately, of how that's going on. Uh, in the first 10 months, uh, COVID had outpaced HIV, malaria, influenza, and cholera, and it's getting even worse. Luckily, there's our uh, immunizations are on the way. Uh, but what we're talking about today, uh, this paper uh, caught my eye uh, a few weeks ago. This had come out in the fall, uh, and it was uh, not focused on CP uh, specifically, uh, but it was out of the UK where they modeled the risks of mortality and the risks of uh, hospital admission. Uh, in a population-wide study uh, where they uh, used the UK health system and used their population COVID testing. Uh, and they did some randomly selected practices uh, to basically study uh, between like six to 8 million by the time uh, all was said and done. So a very large study uh, they had uh, in the derivation cohort about uh, 6,400 people with cerebral palsy. Uh, this was a study of adults that were aged uh, 19 or over, so this excluded children. Uh, but very large uh, and well-designed nevertheless. I know that you cannot read uh, this uh, big flow chart over here, but they did their result, their analyses were stratified by sex and they used uh, cost proportional hazards regression models. And they also, I believe, looked at some uh, random effects models as well, where they used the uh, 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 random slopes, uh, uh, random parameters for the uh, uh, intercepts. So, just of the story is adjusted hazard ratios uh, for mortality were increased by around threefold, both in women. Uh, uh, and actually, I'll stop there for a second. Uh, this, these are the results in women, uh, threefold or so elevated risk uh, uh, of, of mortality uh, and cerebral palsy. Also, they showed up where diabetes, cancer, uh, learning disabilities a little bit less. Uh, Down syndrome had a uh, very strong association. And this is also, also adjusted for their uh, Townsend deprivation score, which was their indicator of socioeconomic status. Uh, very similar findings that you see in men. So uh, very, uh, all the same significant associations panned out, uh, very minor differences in the overall magnitudes of association. And you saw a similar pattern uh, in hospital admission. So people with CP were more likely to be hospitalized uh, for COVID related uh, uh, illnesses. Uh, then people without CP adjusted for all of these other factors. And you saw the same thing uh, basically in women uh, as you did in men. And so uh, this is a very interesting study. Uh, the models fit pretty well. Uh, they did very well uh, for mortality, a bit less so of the discrimination capacity between uh, uh, people who suffered the outcome and those who did not when it came only to hospitalizations. Uh, but as far as large models go, and looking at this well-designed, uh, the fit was pretty good. Uh, they used two independent uh, uh, split cohorts, uh, three quarters versus one quarter, and they used uh, two different time periods uh, to see the, uh, whether the, uh, the relative magnitudes of association held, and they did. Uh, so this is all uh, very interesting, but if you want to drill down into the study to try to understand a bit more about what this actually means, uh, these models really rely on administrative data. And when you're, I have the picture of the lamppost, of we're looking where the lights shine. And what I mean by that is uh, there's no cohesive testing strategy in the study. So it's very hard to tell whether or not you're actually describing the full population or whether or not you're using what's available. And so uh, these estimates are also dependent on the early socio behavioral environmental factors that are in the background population. And so uh, basically representing a background susceptibility that as the prevalence of background factors changes, so too will the model performance. Uh, but the authors have acknowledged this, they've done a good job, and they believe that the relative uh, differences they showed uh, will actually persist. So they did a good job, and their findings for CP are, are noteworthy. Uh, one thing to note, though, is the difference between sick individuals and sick populations. And this idea of looking at this uh, classic paper of epidemiology uh, is the when we think about it, if, if everyone were exposed at the same time to something, we would never find it if we were trying to do risk factor studies because everyone can share the equal exposure. 
you can actually kind of flip that around a little bit and say that in the early portion of the uh, pandemic, when the outbreaks were, uh, uh, you know, really uh, unchecked, that we're really going to see more of a reflection of our own population more so than seeing something that is specific to COVID. So we're really learning more in the earliest waves about the background population more than COVID-19 itself. Uh, and it's in that that we see cerebral palsy uh, fitting into this paradigm uh, that there is susceptibility there. It has been highlighted by COVID and it should be studied and investigated further in terms of figuring out what's going on. Uh, but this is just one study. Uh, there are limitations like all studies. We don't really know. This is an individual risk. It's population level risk. And we're not so sure about how it replicates elsewhere. Although there is some information that we've seen that's come out of the U.S. Uh, in children, uh, they had uh, uh, looked out of the uh, COVID-19, COVID net surveillance network. Uh, and so this is, again, uh, uh, kind of like a sentinel surveillance of a number of different practices across 14 states. Uh, they also noted that among the uh, conditions that were listed as background conditions among children, uh, that cerebral palsy did show up uh, that you see. So uh, not directly the same design by any means, uh, but there are, is evidence outside of the UK. And I'm sure that folks on this call will be thinking of new ways to get more evidence on that. So why might people with CP uh, be at elevated risk? Uh, a, we don't know. But uh, there's increased care needs. There's a lot of interactions that go on that are accompanied by cerebral palsy. And there's more an opportunity for elevated exposure in terms of having more uh, uh, need for continued interaction uh, in terms of healthcare uh, services, social services, those types of things. You may have elevated exposure. We don't know. Uh, also increased susceptibility, uh, immune-related phenomenon, infection or otherwise. Uh, we had talked about several folks today. Uh, comorbid chronic diseases, uh, cardiopulmonary specifically, unhealthful aging, as we just heard in our last talk. Uh, there's also an important element in terms of social isolation related phenomena, uh, and that could be related with uh, in terms of elevated risk of mortality for various reasons that have been associated with CP in the past. So that is my very fast going through uh, what we know, at least right now, is we know a little bit, we should know more, and hopefully we can all contribute to that. So thank you so very much. Uh, for participating, and I will stop there.